So in today's video, what I wanted to do was go over a whole bunch of tweets. There are a bunch of comments, a bunch of media interviews, and extra things that revolve around the Vancouver Canucks. Because yesterday's win against the Vegas Golden Knights was a pretty good one. And there's a lot of good stuff going on here. I don't know, man. Like, this is the crazy sort of fickle part about Vancouver hockey and Vancouver hockey fans. We could have weeks and weeks of losses and piling up problems and the team only winning tight games against bad teams like Anaheim or Arizona, but all it takes is a really good game to put everybody back on the horse and say, okay, let's go back on the hype train, folks. And sure, I get it, you know, I'm one of the Canucks fans that tries not to get too excited about this kind of stuff because, you know, what's that Zendaya quote? If you don't have any expectations, then you're never going to be disappointed, something like that. But expectations or not, you can't deny that the Vancouver Canucks vibe is there right now. And it's not even just with the fans. It's not even just with the social media responses popping off. It's also with the team itself. Let's go out there and look at a few things that were posted onto Reddit and Twitter in regards to the Vancouver Canucks, starting out with this post made yesterday by Templar Paradox 17 during the game itself. Quinn Hughes has four goals in four games ever since the biased ESPN talk about Yossi and Makar. Hughes must pay really close attention to his stats and media talk, because after ESPN made that biased ranking using shots and blocks and saying they prefer goals, Hughes had scored four goals in his last four games. It's not close. Now, yeah, the ESPN thing that we had just talked about, that was in a video a few days ago talking about how apparently some voters for the Norris Trophy are going to vote based off of goals rather than play, and as a result, they'd vote for Makar. So, Quinn Hughes heard that and he was like, hey, I'm going to go out there and start scoring some goals myself. Now, I'm kind of like half joking here. He probably didn't listen to the media and decided that he's going to start scoring more goals based off of that. But Quinn Hughes now has 17 goals on the year in comparison to Kale McCarr, who has 19, Roman Yossi, who has 21, and then Dahlien and Weaker, who each have 19 as well. But aside from the Quinn Hughes goal-producing streaks, there have been some other really good vibes going on with this team too. Like this tweet, for example. Jason Bruff made this during the Canucks and Vegas game yesterday as well. I love sports. Less than one year ago, the Canucks couldn't give away Besser or Garland. Now, one has 40 goals, and the other might be getting too much praise to qualify for the Unsung Hero Award. And... Praise, that's exactly what happened because Connor Garland, after the game during the Three Stars showcase, ended up getting a standing ovation and people chanting his name out. That was crazy. In fact, this is what Connor Garland said earlier today about the Canucks chant. It's nice that the crowd were able to do that. My parents woke up this morning to see it and they were all excited, so that's cool for them. There also were some extra comments about Connor Garland, like this one made by Rick Tockett last night after the game. He's a greasy guy. Not his hair. His hair is not greasy. And this comment might seem like not that big of a deal, but George goes out there and replies saying, yeah, the coach cracking jokes means that he's in a good mood. Great team win, and nice to see the personnel milestones met tonight. Garland, of course, had himself his 400th NHL game and his 100th and 101st NHL goals scored in the game. So seeing Rick Tockett being able to go out there and talk about him, say, yeah, he's a greasy guy, not his hair. It indicates the vibe in the room, like if the Canucks ended up losing, you know, Rick Tockett's not going to crack jokes on the podium. He also had some more comments on Connor Garland, though. I know him really well. The players kid me that he's my favorite, teacher's pet kind of thing. Millsy busts my balls for that. He's a small guy that plays big. And because there was some extended time with Tockett in... Arizona with Connor Garland. Of course, there's a bit of a connection there, but it's so cool just seeing how Rick Tockett's able to talk about that kind of stuff and be like, yeah, a lot of the players kind of joke around saying that Connor Garland is my favorite, and even JT Miller is the guy always going out there and busting my balls for that. You can tell this is a close group, Dominic replies. It's such an exciting time in Vancouver right now. Coaching, management, and the players have all done a fantastic job. Now, one more thing about Connor Garland. This was also talked about by Rick Tockett. Rick Tockett tells a story from when he was coaching Garland earlier in his career in Arizona. Tockett told Garland that he wasn't a 17-minute-per-night player, to which Garland responded, You better make me one. 
and make me one? He did, because Connor Garland last night in the game against the Vegas Golden Knights got up to 18 minutes, so there you go. He's been getting this time on ice consistently, 18, 18, 18 minutes, 15 minutes against the Vegas Golden Knights last time, but then 17 minutes against Anaheim. He has been a 17 plus minute per night guy, which is directly what Rick Tockett said he wouldn't be. Which is great, considering that Connor Garland did do the chunk of his development in the NHL with Arizona and with Tockett, so there's a lot of familiarity there, there's a lot of good vibes there, and now Connor Garland with his 42 points in 78 games played, while it's not the same point production he had two years ago, you could debate he's playing a lot better. Which is kind of nuts, isn't it? Like, he's getting fewer points, but his effectiveness and his tenacity is so much more utilized than it has been in the past. It's kind of nuts when you think about how good his body of work has been since then. Even JT Miller, he went out there and joked during the podium as well, saying that he might have to get Connor Garland 401st NHL Games shirts made up for Wednesday. Because, I don't know if you had seen, but they were wearing Connor Garland 400th NHL game shirts heading into yesterday's game against Vegas. And that's one of those things where it's like, you know, you're not going to get that done for you unless the team actually likes you. Like, nobody's going to celebrate some milestone like that by getting t-shirts unless you're a pretty distinguished, well-liked person in the locker room. So the fact that the Canucks are able to let loose, just do it a little bit and let Connor Garland have his moment whilst also seeing him get two goals, very important goals as well in the upcoming game against Vegas, that is the icing on top. Now, JT also had some comments made about Brock Besser. Bess hit his 40th goal of the season last night, and JT ended up saying this, It sucks. I've been telling him now that he can't score without me, and he's been rubbing it in my face right now. And that is exactly what we've been starting to see. Brock Besser playing away from JT Miller has still been able to produce goals, which is kind of great. There's a lot of versatility here, whether Besser is playing with Pedersen and Hoaglander, or with JT Miller and whomever else, Brock is still finding ways to put the puck in the back of the net, and he becomes the very first Canucks 40-goal scorer in 13 years as a result. Who would have thought this was possible, right? Like, Jason Bruff's tweet at the beginning of the video says it all, but last year, the Canucks were trying to trade away Garland, they were trying to trade away Besser, but they couldn't. Nobody wanted these guys, and Besser almost got traded to Pittsburgh for a lowball package, and Garland was never really ever going to be on the move because his cap hit was a bit too high, but now it's like these two guys, two American forwards, are in the best positions of their entire careers. Brock Besser is a 40-goal guy, ladies and gentlemen, and he's doing a good chunk of this without JT Miller. He's at 40 goals and 33 assists for 73 points. He's already bested his career high in goals, very obviously, and he's four behind his career high in assists, but points? He's already bested his mark from multiple seasons ago, where he had 56 points in 69 games played. That was in 2018-19. That was my first year of college. That was so long ago, and it's kind of nuts thinking about how things have gone ever since then. But now, with the Vancouver Canucks, we'll do one more checkup on the points race before ending this video off. JT Miller leads the team with 100 points in 78 games played. Quinn Hughes has 88 points in 78. Pedersen has 87 in 78, and then Besser has 73 points. The rest of the lineup is rounding itself out nicely. I mean, Philip Hronick has kind of stopped scoring, which is good for contract negotiation purposes. Connor Garland is at 42 points in 78 games right now. He has just been on fire as of late. Same with Niels Hoglander. 34 points and 23 goals in 76 games played. All of his goals being scored at even strength. Now, even though you may say that some of the Canucks' points are, you know, in the same territory as last year, like, oh, last year Pedersen led the team with 102 points, this year Miller has 100 already, and he'll probably get a few more to get past 102, but this season the Canucks already have three guys at 80 plus points, and another one at 70. Last year, they didn't have that. They had two 80 point plus guys, and then two more at 70 in Kuzmenko, and then Brock Besser had 55 points. Bo Horvat was over a point per game, so you could debate that if he stuck around, then everything would have been a bit different as well. But still, it's not really the same, considering the Canucks wouldn't have had Hronik if they hadn't made the Horvat trade and everything. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the recent Canucks vibes and how Brock Besser and Connor Garland, these guys have revived their careers. It is so awesome to see, and I don't know if this would have been too expected at the beginning of the season, but it's a very welcomed, open result, right? So, thoughts in the comments about the Vancouver Canucks and the aftermath of last night's Vegas game. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishashroll 9 and...
Bye.